everyone. Welcome to this short tutorial on how to get started using Loom to record your weekly video reflections. With that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So in the browser, I've come to loom.com and I assume you've already created the free account for educators. So I'm actually going to come, I'm going to sign in, sign in. And when you sign in, you'll see here all of your Loom videos that you've recorded. Now, I cleaned out my accounts so that it would mirror if you were just getting started with Loom and didn't have any recordings. So the first thing that I want to show you is how to download the desktop app. So what you'll want to do is come up to More, click here, and then click on Desktop App right there. And here it's detecting that I'm on Mac OS, but if I click See More Options, I can download it for PC or Mac. And of course, you could go ahead and click Download, and that will begin the download process. So once you've downloaded Loom, you would go ahead and install it, just like you would any other piece of software. And then what you do is when you launch it, that new application, you'll see here that Loom is actually sitting up in your menu bar. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is if I mouse over my dock here on Mac OS, I don't see a Loom icon. So that's something that a lot of people find confusing depending on how they're used to using apps. So one of the first things that I want to do is actually change that preference. So I'm going to click there, come to preferences, and I'm going to come over to account, and I'm going to say show the dock icon. So I'm going to turn that on. And then I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now if I come down to my dock, I can actually see that Loom has a dock icon. And I can tell my operating system, keep that icon, keep that application in the dock. And so I'm going to go ahead and select that. Now with Loom running, I have several choices of what I can do. So the first thing you'll want to notice is there's actually three options here. Screen plus cam. In other words, I'm telling it I want to record my screen plus my camera, which I, of course, you could see down here in the lower left-hand corner. Now, I may only want to record my screen only, and in that case, the cam shuts off, or I may want to record only my cam. In other words, just this little window down here at the bottom. Loom can do any of those combinations. Now, one of the reasons I like it for video reflections is the fact that you can record both the screen and your cam and your webcam. And I think that's valuable from a communication point of view because it allows us to, to see each other while we're communicating our ideas. Now, a couple of other settings. If you have multiple cameras set up, you could adjust this to say which camera you want to use. So I'm using my USB camera. Another option is what microphone do you want to use? And I happen to have a whole bunch of microphones attached to this, but I'm going to use this one here. Now, another thing you can do is specify what you want to record in terms of your screen. So do you want to record full screen or do you want to record just a window or a custom size? Now I typically use custom size and I'll show you how I do that. So imagine this scenario. I'm going to click on Chrome and I'm going to switch over to my slides. I've prepared in Google Slides a couple of slides that I want to share for my video reflection. So what I can do is come over to Loom and say I actually want to record a custom area and I'm going to select that area and then what I get is this modal screen which allows me to just kind of click and drag with these little handles to specify exactly what it is that I want to record and then it's nicely it's going to position my video right over top of that and now what I can do is click this red button to begin my recording and so it's just going to record this with my webcam. So I'm going to go ahead and click Start Recording. And I'm actually going to see the countdown. And now it's recording my screen. Now if I take a look over here on the left to these buttons, if I want to stop my recording, I can click this red square. If I want to pause my recording, I can click the pause button. Now, a couple of important things that I really like about Loom is I can actually move this around. So if by accident I was covering up some important text, I can move my webcam around. 
I can also resize my webcam. If you mouse over the three dots at the bottom, I can make myself bigger. I can actually size myself up so you could see more of me like this while I'm communicating. Or I can actually switch, whoa, that's actually very large. I can actually switch to my photo that I have tied to my account. Uh, we definitely don't need to see that. But typically, you'll want this smaller size. And for some reason, you needed to shut it off. You could just click the X here. Now, the other really nice feature about Loom is you can actually annotate while you're speaking. And so here's the annotation screen. You can select the color of your marker. You can also adjust the size of it by using this slider. And what it allows you to do is actually highlight things just like that. Now you'll notice in a few seconds that'll go away. So it's not permanent annotation. It's just kind of quick mock-ups or markups that you could use to emphasize a couple of points while you're talking into the webcam. So when I'm finished, what I'm going to do is click stop. And then immediately, you'll notice that Loom begins processing. And what is it doing? Well, it's actually uploading your video to the cloud. So Loom doesn't record your videos locally. It's actually recording them in the cloud. It'll take a second or two for it to actually process your video, depending on how long your video is and what resolution you're using. So you can see here, I actually have my Loom video. Now there's a couple of things I could do. I can change the name of this, Dan's Loom, and then I could put in July 10th, 2020. And I can also do a couple of other things. So for example, I can adjust the settings here. Do I want to allow comments? Do I want to allow emoji reactions? Typically, I think that's helpful to do. So I would leave that turned on. Some other things, maybe at the end of it, I recorded some things I didn't want. I can start trimming. It's really easy. I can just kind of move these handles to specify what part of my video I want to keep. Once I get these handles right where I want them, I can click remove. I won't do that now, so I'm just going to click cancel and then return to video. Now, another important thing I can do is click call to action. So I can click on call to action. And actually, this is like a button that you can put at the end of your Loom video. And so I might type in check out resource. And what I can do is actually put in a link to, I'll just use Google as an, whoops, I'll just use Google dot com and then click save and now if someone was to watch my video and if they got all the way to the end you'll see here in a minute that that call to action check out resource if they click that it will take them to the resource which in this case was google so those are some of the features related to editing and adjusting your call to action in the loom interface now finally what we want to be able to do is embed this loom video into our canvas discussion so what we want to do is hover over this share icon right here and if we click that, it gives us lots of ways to, to share that. But what we want for Canvas is the embed code. So I'm going to copy that and we can either use a responsive size or a fixed size. We want the responsive size. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that code. I'll come to the discussion. But what I want to do is actually reply to this. So I'm going to click reply. What I want to do is actually switch over to HTML editor. And then I'm going to paste in that embed code. And then if I switch back out of the HTML editor, I'm going to have my Loom video embedded right into the discussion. But actually what I would do now is just click post reply. So again, how did I do that? I clicked on HTML editor and I pasted that embed code right into this window. I switched back to the rich content editor and then click post. Okay, everyone, that's a quick overview of how to use Loom. I hope it's helpful. I'll see you in Canvas.